um, Odium X in that basket, but that didn't really work well in this game. And Cuz will lock down the POG on Rumble. Uh, if you don't manage to find those leads, it can be a little bit more dangerous as Cuz potentially back to an old favorite. This is one for either Faker or Kanner as well, if they would like to. Love the flexibility. Not allow. Oh, I love that, wow. though. I love that. Nocturne going to be taken away here. The synergy with uh, being able to place down. Yeah, I've seen it played. Might not be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe going to be a lot more long range. I mean, this composition has so much poke. I mean, you can poke with Varus from far away. The range is great from Rumble's Equalizer. You have Nocturne who can engage from a very, very far. I feel is like Dane just gave the thumbs up, so it's definitely possible. Oh my god. This just feels like a tease. I'm so ready. Okay, no, instead it's going to be uh, likely to be Cuz on this Diana. We saw Diana actually considered a couple of times in our opening series of the evening. Of course, wasn't really up to snuff. We saw Canyon play it once at MSI. So this matchup, like you said, between Faker and Chovy and Zoe is... Oh, yeah, there's there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. I thought maybe he would have played it. It's like... When you've got Faker who's been playing since 2013, right? It's just been so, like, it's such an extraordinarily large amount of time. Do you have to remember all of the things that could have potentially been in meta? I'm... Well, Deft is taken down to about 200 health as uh, Teddy's going to get devoured. Vista denied a lot of his engage as piercing darkness over Deft. Not exactly what he wants to be dealing with a really long time. Cuz once again, lying in wait. This time just waiting to lock down Morgan. Okay, that's going to be face breaker, and I think he's just dead. No opportunity to even flash out of that one. As Kuz is going to be able to lock down first blood. Solo kill possibly for Chovy. Takes the turret shot, but gets the flash. So it's a success, but it's not as big as a success as the top lane gank ended up being. Oh no. And look at this. Johan's down here, but Kerry and Teddy are just still sitting pretty in the bot yeah. side of the map. Like 2v3, okay, spend more time here. Okay, wow, this is actually still just gonna decide to go in. Teddy burning down with the Ignite. Carrier now trying to walk away. Still has Flash available though. Uh -oh. The stun comes in as Kana gets the two-man face breaker. It feels like the teleports are just perfectly unlocked for T1 this series. Oh no! And they're looking for even more. The stun's gonna come in. They even had a ward there in preparation as Teddy locks down a kill for himself as well. It has all fallen apart for Hamala. Damage, But you commit that hard, you find yourself teleport flanked, as you can see, Cuz plays in window mode here. Yeah. And, I mean, this is really easy. The sun is there, the follow-up face breaker. <laughs> Boom. And, like, there's just so much CC, you're dead there. But look at this, I mean, he's staying so long, he's begging for someone to flank teleport. They're like, oh, is he really staying? Okay, he's really, really staying. We're gonna trade a bunch of damage back. And then Kana shows up. And that ward as well, like the position on that ward. I mean, Hama Life Esports had absolutely no idea. Yeah. Vista was flashing underneath the turret while Kana was walking at them and not even while it was channeling. And this is a, a composition that has so much CC too that, you know, they've got damage from basically everywhere outside of Vista. So. They're going to try uh, and see what they can do here with a lot more of a damage profile. Cleared vision, they know there's no vision. Cuz has still not been seen. Okay, he is now. Definitely now, yep. <laughs> As he dives on forward, and I just don't know whether it's going to be enough. Moonfall comes down, and I think Vista this is just double. dead. The flash on forward. Deft is going to flash to answer. And Cuz looks like he knew that he wasn't going to be able to take enough turret shots. That's a nice sidestep. And Vista just continuing to walk the same direction as that particular Duke. Liked it a lot. Depth still walking on forward now, but they are able to take down this Leona. Equalizer clears out the minions, but isn't able to grab the kills. It's, that was a cute little flash over, but... Forward. And that's just painful, as we'll watch this one more time. See, it's actually really well handled by on life. Like, Vista gets the stun here, walks back under the bottom side of the turret. Cuz doesn't have enough damage to actually get execute, has to follow flash. Vista has a wave here coming, so he actually is able to stay here for so long, survive. So Johan's like, okay, I'm coming. I've already rotated all the way down here. I'm going to drop the equalizer. Does not hit Cuz, only hits his used his flash, so you don't gain that much from taking Teddy's away. This is somewhat bold from T1 as, uh, okay, we're Carol down very, very low. Johan does secure it, but there's the kickback. Vader making the plays as Leona, the first one to go down. Morgan diving into the back line. The equalizer is good, but it's too late. It's a double kill for the man in the mid lane. And Deft is able to lock one down at the back, but it's not going to be enough. T1 lose the Herald, but it's a three to one when it comes to the team fight. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that's I think what everyone says because look at this from Faker, just really beautifully played. I mean, Cuz handles this super well too, and the Nocturne ult from Morgan is just so late. I feel like if, it, if you bring that in earlier, at least even if you hold it, 
you eliminate a lot of the vision. It's much, much more difficult for T1 to execute this, but he ults so late, I think because he's scared of engaging here. And, you know, it, it, it's just unfortunately him just skirmishes. T1's composition will crush, but later they've got the Senna scaling, so... <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely fine. And I, I just really like the fact that Kuz can be a legitimate carry this game as well, because he is the one doing magic damage. Look at that cheeky control ward down the bottom side. Meanwhile, Kuz is making his way in. Okay, flashes out of the way. Not sure whether it's going to be enough. As at least the Dawning Shadow misses. Can Morgan find the kill? The answer is absolutely not. Cuz says calculated as he walks away. So uh, we're, we're there for him. And he's going to get slept again, but Teddy's here, so... <laughs> I mean, maybe Toby it's perfect dare. time for a nap. Yeah. You know, as the exhaust comes down, they're committing onto Johan, who flashes at the last second. I like that one. Solar Flare. Vista going to flash as well. And there is a Rift Herald making her way down the bottom side of the map. We'll see whether she can actually get towards the charge. The Equalize is good. The Devour is even better, though, as Carrier spits Teddy out. He flashes. The Ignite ticks down and isn't going to be enough. And the Double Flashes no will get T1 to safety. Chovy bounces on... How did that? Nobody. That nobody was ridiculous, did. and I have no idea how that one missed. As there it is, finally, a kill does go down. As the Abyssal Voyage will get the rest of them to safety, and Shelly will get a charge. Now it should be super easy for them to pull off. As we watch this one more time, everybody's got flash advantage. So even though this ends up going poorly for T1, they're able to retreat against the wall. This was a very desperate attempt to try to get value out of that Rift Herald from so long ago. The sleep is actually massive here because it allows the Equalizer to connect, but they're still able to get over the wall here. Look at that Teddy with almost no health. Everybody else is just follow flashing. And then without vision, they are able to pull this off. Def does. I believe he has no vision of this. He does hit it. Yeah. Oh, no, actually he did. Well aimed. And this is a, ended up being a, a charge that goes through, but it's not enough to turn this game around just yet. Like, they need more of these moments. And that took everything they had. Oh, dear. Uh, Carrier in a whole host of trouble. Harmer Life Esports have resorted to setting up gank brushes. And that is going to be Catfish for dinner served up. So at least there's that. Uh, the answer for T1 is taking down an outer turret on the top side of the map and continuing to put pressure on everywhere. There's the play from Faker looking for Chovy, but trolled by minions just a little bit, and the flash does have to eventually come out. Found its way in. Okay. Cloud Drake down to about half health here, but Harmalife Esports in position to try and fight it. Chovy only just getting his way over as there's the Paranoia. Solar Flare finds absolutely no joy whatsoever, but it's a good equalizer as Morgan dives into the back line. Everyone going golden where they can. The kickback from Faker was fantastic, and the Varus is taken. Double kill for Teddy as he cleans up the bottom lane. It is an Infernal Soul, but I don't think that's the most important part because Johan, he's running for his life on the wrong side of the map. And it feels like T1 have already got this one tied up. Yeah, it feels like it, man. 11 kills to four. And in this fight, you know, we'll watch this one more time. But watch Teddy, right? The paranoia gets popped. He dodges the solar flare. Uh, <laughs> and then look at Teddy. He's already uh, he's already collapsed onto. But look at what's happening throughout the fight while Teddy almost dies. He's actually totally fine, though. This is, this is one of those moments where, like, what does your Nocturne do? If you don't dive onto Teddy with a Nocturne, are you trying to help front to back? You can't really do that either. And T1 are just too ahead. Their items are too good. Teddy is way too fed. You know, you can't blow up the AD carry for free. And so T1 walks out after all of the ultimate suppressed, and then they find themselves exactly what they want afterwards. Uh, yeah, Johan's dead. Real dead. And I, I don't even want to oversimplify this in terms of the draft, too, because, like, yeah, the draft uh, could have been different. It could have been arguably better for Hunter Life Esports, but the other way. And this is going to be Johan getting picked once again. Just doesn't have vision, but he's so desperate for any money he can get. And he just gets showstopper right into a wall. Nobody could save him. <laughs> Death is like, sorry, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and they have the equalizer. If they can find one single target, it's amazing. But when you don't have vision control, I mean, look at that. Two control wards blocking out anything. They can't see. They have to go in blind like this with Toby's teleports. Well, Vista, he's going to flash on forward. There's going to be a flash out immediately from Teddy, though. As he just goes into the mists, and now Armor Life Esports, have they overcommitted? Chobi trying to walk out. Vista not going to be so lucky as he looks to try and get out. Baker going lo to lock down that kill. Is now Kana with the hugest shield ever, just chasing Morgan out. It is going to be a decent piercing arrow as Carrier comes on forward with the Lickitung, as you so beautifully put. And uh, he's just going to be swept up. That's a triple for Faker's Lee Sin. Kana's still hunting Morgan, but it looks like T1 are going to turn their eyes towards this Baron as Chovy, he's trying to tidy up the mess that was made in the mid lane.
Yeah, Morgan is going to try to Well, that sidestep was actually kind of cute if it was on purpose. Faker <laughs> looking for the unofficial Quadra as he is going to get a little bit scared and kind of says, don't worry, mate, I'll tidy this one up. Yeah, the inhibitor is down. There's a little bit of pressure even in the main base right now as T1 will clean up this Baron, but 6-0-5 is Faker on this Lee Sin, but the story of this game, I feel like, has just been the coordination across T1. The bottom lane was so stable, and in these moments where you all in across the map to try to make something happen, I mean, we saw the teleport port from Toby to try to stop asleep. Then you see the Zenith Blade come through, and it's just like, I gotta find somebody, anything. But even Eliona is just not gonna be able to withstand the amount of items and damage. I mean, you, you were the one who coined the phrase, hit them with your wallets. T1 certainly are doing that right now. I mean, you all in like that with the Leona, you're hoping that your team has the follow-up, but they don't have the gap closed. They don't have the follow-up pushing down this bottom lane. Mid lane already sorted. The Bramble back now being taken. As, uh, there's the Paranoia looking for a bit of a fight here on Kana. As Johan walks into an Abyssal Voyage, and uh, yeah, he puts down the Equalizer, but that's just Pineapple standing in a row. Everybody jumps on top of you like you're a bleeding fish and they're a bunch of piranhas. And yeah. you want to just crush him instantly. He has yeah, to back off. a lot of damage. That was a dawning shadow just to soften up the members of Life Esports and it's done exactly that. Underneath Nexus Terrace now as Morgan goes golden. Teddy's going to be able to lock down the kill on his opposite number three already. As Chovy, the last man standing. Morgan, I believe, actually fell down there as well. So make that one four. I told a lie. Nope, never mind. Just respawning is Johan. And T1, oh, Faker on the fountain will be taken down. But the Nexus will follow suit. And a very convincing 2-0 from T1 reinvigorated in summer. And T1 looking very good to start here against Honol IP Sports. This is one of the matchups of this week. This is going to be a fantastic one. It should be close. Maybe it goes to three games. We'll see Honol Life come back up. They've got a lot of time. They're back in form, you would hope but it just doesn't end up being that way. It just does not end up being. T1, it was a lot of talk, right? It was a lot of big talk moving into this season. Uh, Danny certainly uh, wanting to make sure that this is a team getting more and more serious. Locking the roster like you were talking about earlier, Wolf, I think is actually, uh, it says a lot for what they think about moving into this particular okay. yeah. Let's uh, listen to T1 as they take down the Nexus Okay, okay. Nice, sir. 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 Uh, ended up being pretty funny. But I mean, look at the damage actually across the board. Like, Jovi out damages Faker, not a huge surprise with the Zoe. Johan out damages Cuz with those equalizers. You're not too shocked by it. As this. it is behind me, of course. Not exactly much of an unveiling if it's already there before I've even started saying it. But congratulations to Kana. He's going to pick that one up with his set play, I think. Um